So we're saying a manufacturer sells boxes of cereal. The boxes state that there are 400 grams in each one. Now, a manufacturer can't absolutely get, get it to be 400 grams. Notice that 400 grams is a, is, is a data taken from a continuous scale. Okay, so even if it might be very close to 400 grams, you know, it could also be 400.000364, or it could be 399.999504. So they can't exactly get 400 grams. So they need to go as close as possible to 400 grams uh, as they can. Now, so not all boxes will have the same amount as well. So some may have less than 400 grams, some may have more. So what a manufacturer would do is they might use a control chart. Now, the way they um, sort of manage their uh, manufacturing is they need to use the control chart to see if the uh, manufacturing process is working fine or something needs to be done about it. So what we're going to learn is that um, in this process, a manufacturer will take samples of the manufacturing. So uh, they'll take samples of these boxes and they will check um, some data around the samples. Okay, so there's three things that they might check. They might check the mean, they might check the median, and they might check the range. Now, we need to understand that almost all means and medians and ranges fall inside um, what we're going to call action limits. Okay, so very few outliers. That's what we're saying. And approximately 1 in 20, so that's 5%, fall outside the warning limits. So there's two different limits that we need to set. A warning limit and an action limit. Outside the action limit is very, very small proportion. And within, outside the warning limits, that only covers about 5% of all of it. Okay, so the manufacturer will check you know, some of these data, okay, so some of these um, summary statistics for the samples that they will take. And this is something that we need to know. Now, we're going to be drawing control charts. We need to know how the control charts will work. Now, in the control charts, if the median is stated or the range is stated, they will tell us where to draw the action and warning limits. If the mean is stated, they might tell us where to draw the action and warning limits. But if they don't, do that, what we need to do is we need to set the warning limits at plus and minus two standard deviations, okay, so we need to assume that they follow a normal distribution, so plus and minus two standard deviations, that's where our warning limit will be, and our action limit will be plus and minus three standard deviations, and when I start drawing that, I will discuss a little bit more about what I said about the mean, median, and range. So I'm going to continue with the same context where we're saying a manufacturer sells boxes of cereal. The boxes state that there are 400 grams, okay? Now, this 400 grams is our target value, okay? So remember that I said that this is our target value. Over a very large data set, the mean was 400 grams. Now, this 400 grams, we're not saying this is our target value, okay? So this is a different 400 grams. So this one we said was the target value because the box stated that this is what you're getting. And over a very large data set, the mean was 400 grams, okay? And standard deviation is 0 0.5. We're going to use this 400 to work something else out, okay? So this 400 is our target value, remember that. And this 400 will be used to work out our limits, okay? Also with the standard deviation here, okay? Now, we've got four samples here. The data is here. And what we need to do is we need to draw a control chart for the samples and state any actions to be taken, okay? So you might face a very similar question in an exam in your GCSE statistics, okay? So uh, what we have to do is we, we've got, I've got a, um, a grid here, so I've, I've got this, these scales done as well. So this is mean on this side, and this is sample here. Now remember, we said the 400 was our target value, which is along here. Okay, so what I can do is I can sort of make a dashed line through here, just to show that this is our target value. Okay, so that's really what we're looking for all the way through. Now we need to put in warning lines and action lines, okay? So warning lines, we said when the mean was given, we might need to work them out, 
okay? And we also need to work out the action lines. If the median or range was given, these warning and action lines will be given to us, okay? So remember that when the median or range are given, the warning lines will be given to us, we just draw them in. When the mean and standard deviation is given, we need to work out what these warning lines are, okay? So we need to do um, 400 plus and minus two of these standard deviations for the warning lines. So let's do that. So 400 plus two times 0 0.5, that's going to be 401. And 400 take away two times 0 0.5, that's going to be 399. These will be our warning lines, okay? So we need to draw them into our control chart. So that's going to be here at 399 and here at 401. So let me do that now. So along here we need a line and along here as well, 399. Okay, so these will be our warning lines. Okay, so I can write here that these are my warning limit and a warning limit here. Now action would mean a more serious thing that we have, we have to think about. So it will be further away here. So action limits will be above here and below here. And they would be set at plus and minus three standard deviations from the mean. So that would be 400 plus three times 0 0.5 and that will be 401.5. And we also need to do 400 take away three times 0 0.5, and that will be 398.5. Okay, so we need to now draw these action limits in. So I need to go at 401.5, so let's draw that in. I'll do it in a different color, just so that we can see that it means something else. But you can do it in the same color. So that's that one. And three standard deviations away was 398.5 when we subtracted it. So let's do that one as well. Okay, so these brown lines that I've just drawn, these are our action limits. Okay, so let's write that down. And action limit here. Okay, so now, this is our chart now sorted out. This is like a time series, start, time series chart. So, you know, sample one, sample two, sample three, sample four. So this is later on and this was earlier on. And our samples are given here. And remember, it's the mean that I need to plot. Okay, so I need to find the mean for each of these. Okay, and then plot them in the right places and see where they lie. Okay, so anywhere between the warning limits is fine. Okay, so we're okay with that. If it's outside the warning limit, a certain action will be taken, okay, and I will tell you what that will be. And if it's outside the action limit, a different action will be taken, okay, and then I will tell you what that will be as well, okay? So the next thing to do is to find the mean for each of these. So let's do that now. So that would simply be 399, add 400, add 401, divided by 3 and that will give me a mean there, and I will do the same for these, and then I'll continue the video from there. Okay, so I've worked out the means, and we're ready to continue. So remember, this is just adding up these three values here, dividing by three, adding up these three here, dividing by three, adding up these three here, dividing by three, and so on. And I will plot these means with the sample number. Okay, so sample number one has a mean of 400 grams, so sample one is 400 grams, so let's mark across there. So that would be here. Sample two had a mean of 400.4. So sample two is 400.4, which is around there somewhere. So I'll mark that one. Sample three came out approximately 401.23. So I need to mark that, 401.23. So it goes above the warning limit here. It would be somewhere around there. Okay, this will actually trigger a certain action. I will, dis uh, I will state them afterwards. Let's just plot the last one. Uh, sample 4 is 401.63 approximately, so let's plot that one as well, which is about here. Okay. So now, now that I've plotted my sample means on my control chart, okay, I'm going to now discuss what's going to happen. Okay. So 
Um, so draw a control chart for the samples. We've done that now. Okay, we've, we've shown clearly where the warning limit is and we've shown clearly where the action limits are as well. Now, um, this cross here, the sample three fell outside of the warning limit. When that happens, the action to be taken is to take another sample immediately to see if the manufacturing process is working fine. So remember, only 5% of um, sample means should be outside here. So here and here. Okay? So if it, if it was one of those 5%, that's fine. Okay? Maybe the mean will come back near here again. But if it wasn't, if something's actually going wrong, remember 5% is a little bit unusual. If something's actually going wrong, we need to check. So when it's outside the warning limit, another sample will be taken immediately. That's the action to be taken after we've seen what happened with sample three. After sample one and two, no action is taken. Everything is fine. It's within the warning limits. At sample three, when we find that it's outside the warning, warning limit, but inside the action limit, we take another sample immediately to see if, if there's anything wrong. If it comes back here, we're fine. If it doesn't, then we think about something else. So we take sample four, and sample four came out outside the action limit. Now, any time anything comes outside the action limit, the action to be taken is we reset the process. Okay, so we reset the manufacturing process so that we, because we assume that something might have gone wrong because it's very unusual to have um, a mean that comes outside the action limit. Remember, it's you know, approximately 0.2% chance that this would actually happen. Okay, so we just assume that this has gone wrong, so we reset the manufacturing process. Um, also, I should say that if it didn't have to have gone inside the warning limit here for us to take the action. Now, if this third one was within our uh, reasonable range, which is around here, if this third one was here, but the fourth one comes outside the action limit, we will still say we're going to reset. Okay? So we didn't need to be warned about the fourth one. If any of these just happen to come outside the action limit, we immediately reset. And any time it comes between the warning limit and action limit, we take another sample immediately. Okay? And that's the same for uh, the limits here and the limits below here as well. So here are some questions for you. You need to um, draw a control chart for the means here, okay, and state also any actions to be taken, okay? So the way I described, but you're going to have to write it down, okay, and this is your context here. And then with the same values here and the same context here, um, I would like you to draw another control chart, this time for the ranges. And here you are given that the warning limits for the range are at 2 grams, Okay, and action limits are at 3.5 grams. So think about what the control chart would look like for the ranges if these, this is the warning limit and this is the action limit. So two control charts, one for A for the means and one here for B for ranges.